This is my latest e-bike build. It's high quality bike from Bemex, Italian bike, Shimano XT components, and I did an e-bike conversion with a Tongsheng TSDC2 motor. If you want to see how I build it, stay tuned and watch. This is a Bemex 2015, I estimate, as this is, at least for me, quite a modern bike, there are some specialties to consider. One point to consider is the bottom bracket. Here at the bottom bracket, we had a Shimano Holotech, which makes the overall bottom bracket narrower, which is good. But nevertheless, we have to look whether this part here will be disturbing or colliding with our motor wheel. Another point is the front derailleur you see right here. The front derailleur on this bike has only a three centimeter travel, three centimeters. And my experience is if you want to have a Tongsheng motor with two chain rings, you have to have a travel of at least four centimeters. And here the next obstacle is waiting. We will use a frame pack battery, which fits in right here. And this collides then with the cables of the gear shift. So these are right now here blank steel. So I have to place covers on the, on the gear shift cables, which basically means I have to replace them. Next step is to place the motor into the bottom bracket and try how well it fits or gets a collision with that here. For that, I unscrewed this part here. This also because I want to replace uh, the chain ring with another chain ring and thus I have much better view on the motor and can better see how it fits and have more room for the montage. Let's have a look. Okay. Yeah, this looks very good. It can't be see from, seen from here, but I'm very close to this here but I think it fits well. So the bottom bra bracket, the, the slim bottom bracket is in this case, no problem. Maybe I take, we are a little bit in trouble here. As you see, this screw touches the frame. And if we go down, there is some space and then it touches the frame again. So our task is to find a position of this counterpart here in the hope, hopefully so to be adjusted, that the screw keeps the position in the middle of this small, um, of this small hole. So I think I found a position. Let's fix, I'll screw it on here. Okay, let's check piece of paper, yeah, doesn't touch the frame. Let's first look how it works out. Good, next step is to mount the securing plate with the washers. Yeah, this looks very good. Um, I think it's this size. Yeah, that looks good. Ooh. Looks good. Okay. Yeah, this looks good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll take a little bit of grease. Uh, yeah. Put it around here. Down here a little bit. Take the securing large nut. Yeah. Well, let's secure it with this special ring here. Yeah, and now I got it. Oh. 
now let's finish this part here. For that, we take this down here. It's already pre-tightened. Okay, move it in here. So, ah, tighten this back up here. Let's go on this side. Okay, no room. No, it works. Works well. Fasten this a little bit more. Yeah, I think the motor fits very well. Let's make the paper test on the rear here. Uh, right now, this screw. Yeah, this screw touches the frame. But I would say. No problem, no problem. Those screws never. I would say, well enough. Good. Next up, unscrew this part. Let's take this one. Yeah. Okay, with a little bit of difficulty, I remove, removed all the screws. This is just a, an aluminum plate, protection plate. This is the center part where the motor torque starts to grab. This is the uh, chain ring, which is a little bit offset. And that is what will mount instead of that a 34 and you see it exactly fits good here we have one small problem where to place the stop i don't know let's guess it and have a try because this should be placed where the uh, where the crank arm is. Don't know. We try it. Just try it. Let's have a look. And if it doesn't it doesn't work out, change it. We will tighten that later on. Okay, we're done. This is a two-fold chain ring. Looks very nice. Let's place it on the motor and let's see how it fits. So this is the motor part here. And we move like right now. This looks nice. I like it. There's double chain ring on here. And where do the holes the threads match? Right here. Here's the stop. And what we see is that the crank arm has a considerate um, distance to the chain ring. So the stop is not of no importance, could be wherever. Now comes the thrilling part. Let's have a look where the chain will fit. Especially on the small chain ring. Yeah, this looks, I would say this looks very good. Yeah, this will work. Definitely. Good. Let's screw on the chain ring. Let's look for the holes. Okay. 
Let's cool it on again. Now let's check whether we have any chance to get it working with the front derailleur we have. No. The inner plate of the front derailleur moves until 3 cm and we have to have at least those 4 cm to get, um, to get the two chain rings work. So currently this is kind of placebo or manual gear shift. Um, so we have first to look for, for the appropriate font derailleur, but nevertheless, we will leave it on as it, I think there are derailers out there and we will get it work someday. Okay, now let's screw on the, the crank arms. There's a left and the right. Take, make a correct choice. Let's take it like this. Now let's secure that. Yeah, it looks quite good. Okay. Yeah, it looks quite good. Okay, here we have some greens. Yeah. Let's, let's not make it too tight. <laughs> Strange, this is another screw is on the right side. But no problem, we take what we get. Mm -hmm. Okay, careful. Now, let's get the pedal on. Remember on the left hand side, the thread goes in the other direction. This means in that direction, usually you loosen it. Okay. Okay. Right now you see also on this side, the replacement cable, the cover which covers the, the gear, the shift the gear shift cable. And uh, sorry for the <laughs> messy background, but you see it's a nice cable. So right now I can take here, I can, I can um, bind it to the frame. Now it's time to get the, the battery in. Here you see the battery in, in. I have already fastened right here and here. This looks quite good. Okay. And you see the straps are flexible. So I will move this out, put it in here. I prefer this frame pack battery to a frame mount battery because this is quite a heavy piece right here. It has about uh, 20 ampere hours. So it's about 800, 700 to 800 watt hours and weights, I think, three to four kilo. So it's endless power, provides endless power. Now let's talk a little bit about cabling. Cabling is always boring, never perfect. It doesn't look good, it's kind of messy and it's so time consuming. That's why we skip to the final presentation. In the final presentation, I will show you a little bit of the details I made with the cabling, but cabling, I hate it, but it's necessary. Cabling, you see this here, contains the power cable going down to the motor, as well as the controller cable, which, which goes up here, and then here, and to the controller. The power cable goes here. Maybe it could be a better idea to take the power cable and feed it in, don't know, maybe up here and down. But I think this is no bad solution at this quite stiff and thus it will work. To charge, you simply open this case here, take out the cable and charge it. I think nice solution. You also can take the battery as a whole out and then take it to your hotel room or whatever and charge it. Motor cabling is always kind of a compromise. You see down here, this cable holder, this spiral tube here, holds the cable for the speed sensor, for the steering unit, and the power cable for the motor. They all three go up here. The cable for the sensor, for the speed sensor, 
then goes out of that. Here is uh, the plug, it goes back here. The other two, I managed to get it through this hole right now, right here, and get them up here and up to the battery case and to the control unit. I'm not that happy with that because this is a little bit close to this, but I also don't like to, to shorten any cables. And I think regarding that, this is quite a sensible solution. I think it will work. Uh, it, it works, but I th also I think it's, um, it's quite good and will last a long time, maybe forever. Yeah, here you see the access cable, some access cable from the gear shift cable from the front derailleur. The point is I have to replace the front derailleur as this front derailleur isn't able to shift the, the chain to the outer chain ring because then that's too less, tra uh, too less travel. So I will have to get an other derailleur here and I left some access cable to have no problems when replacing the derailleur. Overall, I think this is quite a nice build. I like it and it works very, very good, very well. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. Hope you got some information from that, useful information. If you have any comments, questions, leave me a comment below. See you next time.